and welcome to episode two of Recording Truro. That is precisely where we're heading right now. We are heading down to Truro Cathedral to record their magnificent four manual Father Willis organ. Henry Willis was considered to be one of the finest organ builders in the entire world. The organ in Truro Cathedral is considered to be one of Willis's best organs, certainly one of his best kept examples. That should give you a bit of a clue as to the quality of the instrument that I am about to record. I will be your chauffeur this evening and I do hope that you are sitting comfortably. I spoke yesterday about that feeling of excitement met with anxiety. I have the feeling of anxiety right now. It's that really horrible feeling you get when you're going on a holiday or going away for a period of time. Have I forgotten something? Yes, I have made a list and I have been through the list about a dozen times, but did I forget to put something on the list? A cable that connects this thing over here to that thing over there? Well, we'll see tomorrow when we set up. It's such an honour and a privilege to be able to say that the first organ I ever recorded professionally was Truro Cathedral. Being a sound engineer is something that I've dreamed about doing ever since I was a teenager and then at university. Heading down to Truro now to record Andrew playing arguably the finest organ in the country, or one of the finest organs in the country, is a real pinch yourself moment. I think it's fair to say that recording Truro is a recording engineer's dream. It's beautiful, the architecture is magnificent, the organ is marvellous, it's well lit, it's really the full package. I'm really looking forward to meeting Andrew for the first time actually. He and I were both at Chester as organists, not at the same time, I'm a bit older than him. So we had that shared history together. And I'm also really looking forward to meeting Chris Gray. Chris Gray is um, a fantastic choir trainer and I'm, he's going to be around tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to saying hello to him. A real privilege to meet these people. The sun's starting to go down now, so I'm not sure I need to wear those anymore. I last played the organ at Truro 20 years ago. Anecdotally, people who uh, play the organ say that the best stop on the organ is its acoustic, and I'm really interested to, to see what that actually means in reality. I played it 20 years ago, but I've, I've got a lot more experience uh, since then hearing uh, these sorts of organs in these um, in those sorts of acoustics is now something that I'm quite used to. 20 years ago I was a teenager and it, playing a cathedral organ was very new to me and almost overwhelming actually so I wasn't really sort of prepared about what I would be hearing and playing but now I've played a lot of cathedral organs. I think I've played most cathedral organs here in, in England. Uh, I've got a bit more experience it's a very loud organ, it's, it's famously loud. Um, David Briggs described Truro as a mini giant. I'm really interested to hear about that. It has a, a wonderful um, 16 foot Ophiclide on the uh, pedal division. Marvellous tuba, as you'd expect with it being a Willis. And the full swell, apparently, uh, will match the sound the full grate. Quite, um, quite a loud swell for it to do that. Well, the sat -nav says that we will be at the hotel in a little over three hours and 200 miles. So I've got lots of time to think about the microphone placement. And I'm going to say something to you now that I wouldn't normally say to people. And don't tell Caroline that I've said this, but I'll see you back at my hotel room. It's a little after 10 o'clock, but I've arrived here at the Merchant House Hotel in Truro. I'm very grateful to the receptionist for being so welcoming and actually upgrading my room from a single to a double. That's very, very generous indeed. I've got my mini eggs, I've got my headphones, and I've got some music. 
I've also got a sneaky drink, so tonight's going to be a good night. I've been thinking quite a lot on the way down about the microphone placement. So six microphones, four KM184s and two TLM170s, two sets of stereo microphones fairly close to the organ. So one set uh, like a direct sound, capturing the width, capturing the clarity of the organ. Second set a little further back, capturing a little more ensemble, a blended ensemble, yet still capturing the clarity and width of the organ. Then the third pair, the uh, 170s, back in the nave of the cathedral, the omnidirectional sound, capturing the acoustic, washing around, bouncing off all of the stonework. Blending those together will be quite a challenge to, uh, to retain the clarity, but yet bring in the body of the cathedral, the, the acoustic, the life of the cathedral. And that will be quite a, um, a slow process of trial and error. I'm really excited about going in tomorrow morning. We've got the cathedral to ourselves. It's locked because we're in lockdown here in the UK. The cathedral will be locked to the public. So there'll be me and the organist and his page turner. It's going to be a really, really marvellous experience and I really can't wait to get in there tomorrow. In the next video, I will take you into the cathedral, I will show you around the cathedral, I will show you the organ console, I will show you the microphone placements, I'll show you the camera placements as well, I'll show you how everything's been set up. But I think before we get to tomorrow, we need to enjoy these mini eggs to listen to a little bit of Herbert Howells and I need to finish my drink. So I do hope you'll join me for the next video. Until then I will say good night and cheerio. Goodbye.